So for this problem, we have two kilograms of water. It's contained in a piston cylinder assembly. Initially, it occupies a volume given 1.302 meter cubed at a given temperature of 160. The water undergoes two processes in series. So the first process from state one to state two is constant temperature compression and the final volume at the end of that process is 0.4 meter cubed. And it reads, during which there is an energy transfer by heat from the water of 1821 kilojoule. And then the second process from state two to state three is constant volume heating to a final pressure P3 of 10 bar. Sketch the two processes in series on a TV diagram. Neglect kinetic potential energy effects and determine A, the work in the process from one to two, and then for part B, the heat transfer in the process two to three, both of those answers in units of kilojoule. So first, we'll just go ahead and try to think about this for a minute. We have a TV diagram. And the first process is compression at constant temperature. Well, it'll be something like starting at state one, going to state two. Wouldn't that be compression, reducing the uh, specific volume at constant temperature? Sure. And if it's at constant temperature, and it started at 160 degrees C, then it would remain at 160 degrees C. All right. Now, looking at the next process from two to three, it's constant volume heating, and it's gonna go to a pressure of 10 bar. Well, my guess is if it's heating and you have constant volume, it's gonna go up to a final state three. Okay, so this is a sketch of the two processes on a TV diagram. Okay, so how are we going to solve for part A, which is the work in the process from one to two? Well, there's two ways to solve for the work one to two. You can think of either doing the integral PDV, or you can do an energy balance from an energy balance, where the energy balance is, is the change in the internal energy is equal to Q one to two minus the work one to two. So we look at this problem for a little bit and it's not obvious how the pressure changes with volume, but they give us in the information the amount of heat energy transfer by heat in the process one to two and it looks like they give us enough information to calculate the change in the internal energy, U2 minus U1. So that'll be the approach to solve for the work. One to two, we'll use the energy balance approach or the first law of thermodynamics. So one of the things to help us do is set up a table uh, of our properties. And so we'll have a different state, state one, two, three, Talk about the pressure in bar, kilopascal, it really doesn't matter, put it kilopascal. Temperature and degree C. We could have a quality if we believe we get into the two-phase region. We can have the uh, specific volume in meter cubed per kilogram. And then we can have the internal energy in kilojoules per kilogram. And then we take a look at all the information given to us. Some of it fits on this table, some of it doesn't. So like the mass is two kilogram. There's really not a place to put it on the table, but we'll use that to fill in parts of the table. And the initial volume is 1.302 meter cubed. So right away you can combine that to get the specific volume at state one, which is just the volume at state one divided by the mass, and that comes in at 
meter cubed per kilogram. So we'll add that to state one, 0 0.651 meter cubed per kilogram. So it's like we used this piece of information right here. And then we'll put in our, our uh, temperature of 160 degrees C. And then we think about our state principle, two independent intensive properties. Maybe they're independent. Probably they're independent at this state, a fixed state. And then we can look up and evaluate other properties like the pressure and internal energy. But before we run off and do that, let's see about putting other information in the table. The process ends at a volume V2 of 0 0.4 meter cubed. The mass stays the same, so the specific volume at state 2 is this, is, can be calculated 0.4 divided by 2 uh, be 0.2 meter cubed per kilogram, and we can put that in there too. 0 0.200. So you could even put numeric values out here. It went from 0.65 down, 0.651 to 0.20. Okay, and then it stayed at 0.20 because it's constant volume while it was being heated. All right, I forgot to emphasize that because it's constant temperature process, we know the temperature at state 2. But now it's being heated, and they give us the final pressure, 10 bar, which is a um, 1,000 kilopascal or one megapascal okay so that's the information that's given let me kind of look around here and say use that information use that information use that information used it used it and look for any other information that's given that we haven't put into the table now there's other information about this heat transfer and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write the energy balance in a table uh, for the process one to two and for the process two to three maybe I didn't leave enough room let me scoot this down a little bit so for the process we're going to talk about the change in the internal energy talk about the heat transfer in the process and then the work and each one of these has units of kilojoule and the general relationship between these is that Delta U is equal to Q minus W from the first law. Okay. So for the process one to two, and then the process two to three. And so we now can have a place to put this information that there is an energy transfer by heat from the water, and that's a key word, from the water in, at the value of 1821. So for the process one to two, it's 1821 but do I leave it a positive or negative well the system is going to be defined as our water and if there's a heat transfer to the water it's positive if it's from the water to the surroundings it's a negative heat transfer in our energy balance that's why it has to be a negative 1821 kilojoule all right let me take a look at anything else is there any other information that we can add to this um, energy transfer table well, how about that work from two to three? It's zero because it's constant volume. There's no shaft in or out, and it's a constant volume process in a piston cylinder assembly, no boundary work. Okay, well, so the goal would be to try to, hmm, if we're interested in calculating this work right here, this work one to two, that's one of the, that's for part A, we would use the energy balance equation. And so the work, 1 to 2, is equal to the heat transfer, 1 to 2 minus U2 minus U1, just using the energy balance. So it's like if I could find the change in internal energy between the process for the process from 1 to 2, then, then it would be good because I already have this part for the Q. And if I expand it out just a little bit, I should have done that. You just put the mass and then the specific U2 minus U1. So really, to solve for part A, work 1 to 2, we really need to get this U2 right here, 
and this internal energy, specific internal energy, U1. Okay, let's go ahead and try to do that. Using our state principle, this is our temperature and our specific volume. We go on the hunt. So let's go to the table A2. Why table A2? Because it has primarily temperature as the input. And what we can do is we can take a look at this temperature and look at the specific volume of saturated vapor and the specific volume of saturated liquid and see if our given specific volume falls in between. So is it uh, between 0 0.3071 and 0 0.001020? If it is, we would say it's in a two-phase liquid vapor mixture. If the specific volume given in the problem is greater than maybe I should draw it like this to help you see it 0 0.3071 if it's greater than that then it's superheated and if the specific volume is is even less than 0 0.001020 well then it's going to be uh, compressed liquid so you know just you have to find where is our value of V and make a comparison with the saturated liquids and the saturated vapor specific volume. And so for this problem, we recall that our V we calculated to be 0 0.651. Well, it's greater than point V sub G, which is 0 0.3071. So we conclude it's superheated. So we leave table A2 and we go to the superheated water table. Superheated water vapor right here, table A4. And we don't know the pressure that it's at, but we start looking at different pressure blocks. And luckily, the problem gives us a temperature that's on a line. So we don't have to visually interpolate or numerically interpolate with respect to temperature. And we start looking at specific volumes and we're looking to see if luckily and it is for this problem v just tends to be 0 0.651 meter cubed per kilogram and so there you go it, it's we found it luckily it just is right here well it's a manufactured type of homework problem created so that it falls on the table and minimizes interpolation so with that Here's our value of U, and here's our value of P. And if you needed H and S, there you go, but it's 2587.1. We can come back and now put that into our table. 2587.1 kilojoules per kilogram. And then that pressure was 300 kilopascal or 3 bar or 0.3 megapascal. And again, I'm going to go back to that table. 3 bar, 0.3 megapascal, or 300 kilopascal is the pressure. And the U1 is 2587.1. So both that information. Is, so if we're doing this, it's like, got it, got it, got it. I just need U2. Well, it's the same thing. We have a value of temperature of 160, and a specific volume is now 0.2, a lot lower. So we would do the same thing, but this time when we take a look at this table, let me draw a line. We're coming in looking at specific volume of 0.2. Well, 0.2 is in between the saturated liquid and the saturated vapor, hence it's two-phase. Therefore, you know, it's two-phase liquid vapor mixture. We can calculate the quality is V minus V sub F divided by V sub G minus V sub F. Our value of specific volume coming in is 0.2. The saturated liquids, 0 0.001020. The saturated vapor, 0 0.3071 minus 0 0.001020. And we calculate a quality to be right at... 0 
So, you know, two thirds is in the vapor state, one third is in the liquid state by mass. Okay. So now what we want is we want the U at state two, which is the use of saturated liquid internal energy minus or plus the quality times use of G, saturated vapor, minus use of F. And so we can substitute numbers. 674.86 plus 0 0.645 times 2568.4 minus 674.86 and we'll get that U the internal energy is right at 1905.6 six six kilojoules per kilogram now we're going to go back to the table and put that number in our table 1905.66 but we also want to look at what was our pressure well because it's in the two phase region at 160 degrees c the pressure is 6.178 bar or 617.8 kilopascal or 0 0.6178 megapascal okay so let's go back to our table and we can put in right here let me put in change color that was 1905.66 and then the um pressure was a 617.8 well we have this one now and now we can actually calculate the work one to two because i'm running out of space i'm just going to say that the work one to two you're going to well let me put the numbers in um, for the q one to two is negative 1821 then you have negative two times the 1905.66 minus 2587.1 and you calculate the work one to two and I did run out of room work one to two comes in at negative 458 kilojoules well it is compression that's one of the reasons it's negative and uh, there you go one of the things was this quality was 0.6 four nine nine something so point six five so to locate state three we begin by looking at table a3 right here and we look down until we find a pressure that's the 10 bar or one uh, one megapascal and we tend to take a look at the v V sub G. So V sub G is 0 0.1944 uh, meter cube per kilogram. And then coming into the table, we had that the specific volume at state 3 is 0 0.2. So we make a comparison. So the specific volume at state 3 is 0 0.2. That's larger. So we find that V sub 3 is greater than V sub G, we conclude it's superheated. So we go to our superheated table, A4. This time we do have the pressure given, 10 bar, 1 megapascal. And we're looking for that, the specific volume where it's equal to 0.2. And it falls right between these two values. So what I like to do is I'd like to make a separate little mini table. Here is temperature, here is specific volume, and here is internal energy and the safe space. We know the units, degrees C, meter cube per kilogram, and kilojoules per kilogram. And the lower value, 0 0.1944, is given in the table, and the upper value, or the bracketing, what brackets, 0.2060, and the value coming in the table is 0 0.2000. It falls in between. So we want to go ahead and 
write our our u value it's two five eight three point six for internal energy and two six two one point nine and the reason i put the two temperatures in is that the 200 degree temperature makes sense but this sat always is confusing to students and so to find that one it's right here it's t sat is 179.91 what well, we don't really need that if you wanted to you could interpolate and get that temperature at state 3 but we really just need to get the internal energy at state 3 okay so you can do the interpolation is in at 2602.10 okay and then you just do a visual comparison. Yeah, that looks reasonable. It fits in that region. Kilojoules per kilogram. So we can come back to our table. And I need to fight for room always. It is a two... I'm just going to erase this. Sorry. It's a 2602.09 or 10 is good enough. And um, I don't know if I ever did calculate that temperature, but it is 189.6. I did that. So there you go. So if you wanted to, you could come over here and say, oh, I know this is 189.6. Okay. Well, now we know that it crossed back and was superheated. So somewhere like this is the line of saturated vapor states. And if you want to, you know, you make a dome like that. But it, it crosses into the two-phase region at state two, but both states one and three are in the superheated region. Okay. So if we're interested in calculating the heat transfer for the process two to three, so we're interested in Q two to three, well, we can see that that's just going to be U3 minus U2. So because this work is zero, and so we fit it over here. We have that the Q2 to 3 is equal to the mass. U3 minus U2. The mass, 2 kilograms up here. U3, U2. And let's just say we can do that math. Q2 to 3 comes in at 1393 kilojoules positive. It is a heat addition in that process. There you go. Well, I hope you found that helpful. We'll go ahead and stop now.